today, you know, we all know that the Himalayan mountain caps are called the third pole, like the North Pole and the South Pole. And that ice cap feeds half the world's population <laughs> through the Brahmaputra, the Indus, the Ganges, the Yangtze, the Yellow Rivers. And they feed China, Bangladesh, Laos, Cambodia, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. <laughs> and they're melting fast, caused by the livestock industry around the world. This is a simple story. But not an easy one to tell. Philip Woolen is a third generation Anglo-Indian who migrated to Australia at the young age of 18. Hailing from a distinguished family, his uncle Malcolm Dundas Woolen is a highly decorated army serviceman. Phil was a successful banker and became vice president at Citibank at the age of 34. However, his heart's calling lay into helping others rather than making money and worshipping mammon. His epiphany in life came when he visited a slaughterhouse that was run by one of his clients. It was a life-transforming experience and he realized that the screams he heard in the slaughterhouse were the same as those of his father when his body was being ravaged by cancer and those uttered by animals in numerous abusive situations. He understood that pain is equal in all species, human or non-human. Phil believes that in the capacity to experience pain, a pig is a dog, is a bear, is a boy. Pulling together all his life savings to form a trust called the Winsome Constance Kindness Trust in memory of his mother and grandmother, he decided to give away all the money he had made with warm hands and die broke. The metrics that we use uh, in, in business is always dollar denominated. We calculate everything in dollars. I don't. I look at it in very simple terms. How many lives can we save? Um, this is not really a question of animal welfare or a question of animal rights. We are all animals. Let's not forget that. A globetrotter, he has quoted the company of many distinguished people he has the statistics and facts to serve as signposts encouraging him on his way. In Africa, 12-year-old boy kills their neighbors with AK-47 rifles. In China, 7,000 magnificent moon bears have to endure concentration camp conditions in cages where they are milked for their bile used in medicine. In South Korea, dogs are beaten to death for meat. Sheep are dumped in the sea en route from Australia to Indonesia and the Middle East. Two billion animals are killed every week for our pallet. Sharks have their fins chopped off and are thrown back into the sea, writhing in agony so rich folks can enjoy shark fin soup. Millions of animals endure ghastly conditions in circuses and zoos to provide entertainment to humans. Dairy farms utilize millions of liters of water and pollute seas by dumping toxic waste. 
Cows and calves are treated like junkyard scrap in dairy farms that make tons of money. But as many of his heroes before time, he soldiers on, drawing inspiration from Mahatma Gandhi's philosophy concerning social workers. I must say, uh, the most beautiful word ever written at any time in any country in human history came from India, 5,000 years ago from the Upanishads, <laughs> Ahimsa, non-violence to any living being. Now at law school we learned about this notion called that we have a duty of care. When we drive across the road we have a duty of care. When we employ somebody we have a duty of care. When someone comes to our house we have a duty of care. But nowhere in the world, anywhere, is there notion that we should have a duty to care. And we do have a duty to care. And it is nowhere in the world except for the Indian Constitution. The only country in the world where animal rights is enshrined in a national constitution. All Indians should be very proud of having that. His feelings were developed by a childhood experience when he saw spider webs in his school. As a boy, he was fascinated by the complex spider webs and small creatures. He gently would touch each strand and try to predict how the shape of the web would change. Touch one strand and the web changes forever. It always changed in unpredictable non-linear ways. He called it My Enchanted Web. It taught him that in life everything is connected to everything. We are all inextricably linked together. In human history, only 100 billion human beings have ever lived. And yet we torture and we kill 3 billion sentient living beings every week. That is a crime of unimaginable proportions. And I see now that many politicians are bragging that India has the largest livestock herd in the world. That is no longer a measure of pride. We now know that greenhouse gas emissions from livestock through methane exceeds those of transport. That is cars, trains, buses, ships, the whole lot. <laughs> livestock is a lot worse. And methane is 24 times more potent than CO2. Protecting turtles, sterilizing dogs in India, saving seals in South Africa, anti-whaling campaigns to counter Japan's intransient whaling policies, safeguarding bears in China, raising awareness on bats in Australia, strengthening rainforest conservation schemes in Peru, and challenging the canned hunting industry in South Africa are only some efforts that he has been supporting over the years. India is a place where Phil gets to breathe and is found in a different mood every time he lands here. I had the privilege to join Phil and his wonderful wife Trix at Vishakapatnam to experience their footprints of kindness in the country and try and understand the mantra. Our first stop, the Vishakha SPCA. It is a proud moment for Pradeep Nath, founder of VSPCA and one of Phil's most trusted animal person here in India to welcome the delegation of distinguished animal people from across the country who have been handpicked by Phil to experience kindness footprints. I'm very honored that uh, you all could come over here, visit the place. And uh, my thanks to Phil for making all this possible. Pradeep Nath is a former banker with a string of postgraduate degrees and diplomas. A dynamic, passionate and intense man whose heart lies in saving animals, he started the VSPCA in 1997 with a small corpus fund and has expanded his operations in the midst of tremendous odds. He has provided employment to many local villagers who have imbibed the kindness ethic. Marine conservation is another activity which is close to Phil Wollen's heart. 
He has lent his support to the daring activities of Sea Shepherd Conservation Society to protect precious marine life across the seas and in India his primary beneficiary is the olive ridley turtle, an endangered species that nests on the beaches of Vishakapatnam. Turtle conservation, especially on Vishakapatnam's crowded beach, has not been an easy affair. Everybody wants a share of the beach, from the presence of mighty machines to human footprints. Pradeep has to encounter them all so the nests are safe. Phil has worked tirelessly to help children all over the world. Indeed, children form one of the five pillars of his trust. Phil helps many orphanages across the world. In Vizag, he assists children in an institute named Pim Hans that enables them to overcome their mental challenges. The Kindness Kids program initiated by kids leads them towards a lighter environmental footprint by encouraging them to adopt a vegetarian or vegan diet. The children interact with pet dogs under a scheme called Professor Paws. Animals have a therapeutic effect on children and help them gauge the interconnection our species has with all life. Phil's involvement with children is to breach the gap that exists among humans and other animals. Phil is not afraid to stand up for his beliefs and be criticized for them. In essence, a private man, he has quoted controversy as you would expect. His critics have called his schemes the pet fancies of a rich man who can afford to have historic ideas. He has been described as impractical and unrealistic and has been threatened personally and been vilified in the press. But the critics are fast turning a minority as the kindness footprints make their mark. You trust in the ones that can find you You love when the hurt is down you The idea behind Kindness Farms is, is basically simple. We have a lot of experience uh, working with uh, uh, the animal kingdom and protecting them from uh, uh, the deprivations that they suffer here in India. And we came up with the idea of buying certain quantities of real rural properties and uh, accomplishing all our objectives uh, through alternative means. Um, so you're going to be relocating all your animals from the shelter? To here? Yes. Uh, I think in the first phase 300 cattle will come, right. then 34 uh, buffaloes yes. uh, and four horses. Basically what we do now is grow a great deal of uh, fruit, nuts, vegetables, flowers, grains, legumes, uh, with a view to feeding our animals uh, and by building a kindness kitchen uh, on every kindness farm, we feed all our staff, our shelter staff, our outside workers. So they get a very healthy uh, vegan meal, which is hot and delicious, and they feel cared for and they live healthier lives. The other objective is to bring uh, them into our Kindness Farm program and give them a trade so they learn how to grow their own food. And in the future they'll be able to bring their own children into the Kindness Farms and work there as well. Basically get them off the meat-eating drug. As a result they are living, living healthier lives. Our animals are living healthier lives. We'll be building biogas plants on every single one of our Kindness Farms and using uh, the dung 
uh, for methane cooking gas, maybe for um, generating electricity. The slurry will be used as it is currently at our shelters uh, to produce um, fertilizer, which is then recycled into our, our growing program. Uh, so far, we've, um, we've got one kind of farm in Putapati, and this one is the second at, at uh, Mashaka. And the third one will be opening very shortly in Bangalore. So we came up with a rather unusual idea. We entered into a contract here in Osaka with uh, a restaurant to provide very healthy vegan hot meals, um, which is wrapped up in a banana skin and then in newspapers. And it includes rice, a very delicious, uh, healthy vegetarian curry, uh, some samba or lentils or something like that, um, some fruit, uh, very healthy fruit that's in season, and a bottle of water. And this gives people a very healthy hot meal. Now, I don't want them to think that this is charity, because it's not. <laughs> We encourage them to let us know if they see puppies being born in the street or if uh, someone's whipping a horse or um, a lorry hit a cow, anything like that, we like them to let us know to go into the shop and the shopkeeper will uh, call the shelter and we can send our ambulance out there. Now that's the strategy. Oh, that I could spare you. needed care and it, on the road it will be killed. It also needs to be neutered so it will have a nice life and we're gonna call, kind this, call this dog our kindness dog. He looks very much like a dog I had at home. Okay. Yeah, very much. My dog at home is named Sam. Maybe we should call him Sam too. Cruelty, you trust in the ones that can find you Sammy would certainly miss being a road Romeo, for his life has changed, and changed for good. Oh, if only dreams came true. Get involved is the most important uh, thing they can do. Now that they know the truth, they can no longer hide. Once they know the truth, they can't ignore the suffering of animals. So they must get involved. If they are not part of the solution, they are part of the problem. There is no choice. Unless you want to be totally ignorant or deliberately obtuse, you must take responsibility. And I don't mean just a very passive sort of way. The first thing you do is, of course, you become vegan. And then you tell your friends, and your friends' friends, and your family, and your school, and your work colleagues. And most importantly, you become an activist. If you're not an activist, you're being passive almost to the extent of benign negligence. And I don't think we have that luxury anymore. We have got billions of animals out there screaming. We don't have the luxury of closing our eyes and shutting our ears. The time to act is now. You've rescued my heart and soul. You've wiped my tears and held me close. You've made me whole. When I was lost, you found a way to bring me home. And now I know there's people in the world that care. Because you're here, you've rescued my heart and soul You've been here for the moments when I couldn't stand When I was down, you reached for me, you gave your hand 
Just a lonely scrap of skin and bone 